गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर हाउ आर यू ऑल फाइन यू आर एंजॉइंग फाइन सर यस सर यू आर एंजॉइंग नॉट कमिंग टू द क्लास फिजिकल क्लास और यू आर मिसिंग द क्लास सर मिसिंग सर मिसिंग पक्का सर 100% यस अच्छा बढ़िया दिस इज द टाइम व्हाट वी कैन डू वी हैव टू स्टे इनसाइड स्टे हैप्पी स्टे हेल्दी इजंट इट सो इन द यूनिट टू वी विल सी इंडियन फिलॉसफिकल ट्रेडिशन एंड इन द इंडियन फिलॉसफिकल ट्रेडिशन फर्स्ट वी हैव टू स्टडी अबाउट द वैदिक फिलॉसफी विद इन दैट चतुराश्रम एंड पुरुषार्था दिस टू थिंग्स आर द पॉइंट ऑफ डिस्कशन बट बिफोर कमिंग टू दैट डिस्कशन वी कैन डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इन द इंडियन फिलॉसफी which will help you to understand uh, the rest of the part of the syllabus the first thing is the orthodox tradition and uh, the second one is the heterodox tradition these are the traditions in the when we talk about the indian philosophy these are the two major tradition when we talk about the orthodox tradition orthodox uh, tradition says that uh, the people who are or who have a firm belief in the established conventional and the traditional practices they will not uh, put a question and uh, they will accept all the things which is a part of a tradition which is a part of a ancient literature or which is coming to them they will accept is as it is like that when we talk about the vedas when we talk about the upanishads someone may question the validity someone may question its utility someone may question its usefulness in the present day to day life if someone is questioning trying to judging then a group of a people will be known as the heterodox people and the tradition will be treated as a heterodox tradition whereas when we accept the traditional conventional literature practice practices then we term them as a orthodox or the orthodox tradition so these are the two major traditions are there when we talk about the uh, indian philosophy even in the western philosophy also these are the traditions prevails now next come to the vedic philosophy the vedic philosophy when we talk it is a indian philosophical tradition which is purely and truly based upon the existing vedic literatures so the knowledge in the vedic literature the learning in the vedic literature the practices which is prescribed in the vedic literature that we consider as a guiding principle of the human life of the philosophical thoughts of the defining anything as a guiding principle when we talk about suppose that uh, what should be the ultimate goal of the human life you may define the goal of a human life in a variety of ways but when you will define the 
value of human life as per the literature available in the Ved Vedas, as per the literature available in the Upanishads, then we can say that it is the Vedic philosophy of uh, human life. You may have the different notion, different understanding of the value of education, why the education should be, what is the utility of education. When you will try to define the utility of education, the value of education with the learnings from the Vedas and Upanishads, then you will try to philosophize education from Vedic philosophy point of view. That is the Vedic philosophy teaches. In depth understanding of the Vedic philosophy, we will have later on, but uh, the first uh, we will uh, try to see that uh, what is Chaturasram as per the Vedas, Vedic philosophy, and what is the Purusartha as per the Vedic philosophy. Because, uh, this is the point of discussion which is prescribed in the syllabus. So, uh, and other detail of the Vedic philosophy, we will also understand better. There is a scope of discussion, but uh, let us uh, uh, focus on these two things. When we think about uh, the Vedic philosophy, the learning, the directive principle which is prescribed in the Veda when we talk about that. So, Veda have defined the uh, age-based life stage for discharging the duty as a human. Because when we take a birth as a human, Veda also suggests that what should be the ultimate goal of the human life? What should be the ultimate duties that should a human must discharge when they take birth as a human? And that's why the Veda categorizes the role duty of humans in four category, which is the age-based. Okay, and, and these four categories are known as the ashrams in the Veda. And since it is, it consists of the four ashrams, that's why it is known as the Chatur Ashram. Means Chatur means four. Four ashrams are prescribed in the Veda. The first ashram says that it is the ashram of Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya ashram as a ashram is defined that it is the stage of a human life where they should focus on getting the knowledge, developing the skill, learning new thing so that these things will be helping the human for the future life for spending the future life because in the future they have to live the life, they have to lead their life, they have to lead their family, they have to lead the society. So in order to live and lead, a human must have some level of a competency, some level of a skill, knowledge, understanding about the different things like that you want to do ag agriculture, then agriculturing skill you must have. You want to do a carpentership, then that skill you must have. Or whatever the work you want to do, that skill you must have so that you can spend, you can do your livelihood. Even in order to survive in the society, you must have a communication skill, you must have a socialization skill, you must develop the friendship, all those things. So, when we talk about, uh, so I was talking about the Brahmacharya. So, Brahmacharya is the ashram, is the stage of life 
that is the age based stage of a life where the human are supposed to learn the skills so that they can live and lead their life it is the stage of learning okay and since it is a stage of the learning that's why it is prescribed that uh, at this stage of our life human must be far from all kind of a pleasure or kind of a enjoyment and they should fully devote their life in the learning process because if the student will be uh, engaged in some other activity their learning process will happen and it will affect the learning process that's why it is suggested that uh, they should be away from all kind of entertainment and the pleasure and they should fully be devoted in the learning process and since we have learned suppose that if we have crossed the brahmacharya stage so i am supposed to have a required level of uh, knowledge understanding and the competency for living the life so that's why the second ashram that begins after the uh, brahmacharya is the grihastha ashram and this grihastha ashram here they are required to serve the society they are required to do the service they are required to take care their family they are required to be in the family be in the society and discharge their duty as a human as a member of the family as a member of a society and that's why the grihastha ashram is known as the one of the important stage of the human life as per the vedas as per the vedic philosophy is concerned because when we take birth as a human by getting a birth we have a some sort of a duty towards the society towards the other human and if we will not discharge those, those duties then there will be a kind of a loan to the human life because in order to grow as a human from a small child there are a lot of people who are involved in helping them involved in uh, nurturing them okay so that's why this is the time this is the stage of a life when you can give them back and that is the concept of giving back to the society it is actually the uh, stage and the process of giving back to the society we must uh, do a service to the society service to the human kind we must live the life we must lead the life isn't it so that is the grihastha ashram second ashram then after doing a lot of a service lot of a work the stage in the human life will come when your body will get older and you won't be able to do much work now you require the service the take care of others and that is the stage of banaprast that is the retirement age as per the vedic philosophy where the human are supposed to retire supposed to leave their duty and rest of the time they should uh, take care of themselves their health their body they should take care the service of the others and at the last is the sanyas means now when your family your children are well established so you should become you should uh, delete yourself from the 
uh, what you can say that the different type of relations, different type of uh, uh, the enjoyment and the pleasure of the earth as a human on the earth of the on the human. So uh, in the sannyasa asram, it is required that uh, whatever the quality of life they had, they will thank God for the quality of life. They will take rest and they will uh, be not involved in the other activity, delinked from the society and link it with the God in the service of God. That is the sannyasa ashram. Okay. So these are the four ashrams in the Bad philosophy. Similarly, when we uh, talk about uh, uh, similarly when we talk about the Purusarth, okay, there is a Purusarth in the Vedic philosophy also, and this Purusarth says that the ultimate objective of being human. In the ashrams, we have seen that the age-based life stage that you have to discharge. So that you will be discharging. But there must be some objective of living as a human. Why you have taken birth on earth as a human? Why the God has given birth you as a human on the earth? And the Veda again says that there is a four objective of taking birth as a human on the earth. There are four objectives. And these objectives are Dharma, Earth, Kam and Moksha. The first objective, which is the dharma, which suggests that the morality, the values of the human life, the human must be on the side of truth, on the side of the learnings of the Vedas, on the side of what is right, and that's why when you will, there is a very beautiful incident in the ancient literature. When you will see uh, Krishna who is talking to the Arjun that what should be the value of a life which is documented in the Gita what should be the value of a life? When there is a situation of a war, which side we should stand? Shall we stand to the side which is our side of uh, the family? Or we should stand on the side which is right to as per the dharma? As per the morality, where should we stand? So, dharma objective talks about the morality, truthness, reality, and the ultimate objective of the human life. Spending life with the principle of Vedas. How they should live their life. That is the dharma. The next thing which comes that uh, the earth and this is the, also the important aspect of the human life. Earth says that as a human we must take side of the 
which is right which is as per the moral value as per the spiritual value which is right to the society right to the mankind but in order to live the life there is a again a necessity of the physical pleasure and the physical uh, you can say that the comfort and for procuring the physical comfort there is a involvement of a money and for the involvement of a money the person must be involved in the economic activity that will bring the prosperity है ना जिसको हिंदी में हम बोलते हैं समृद्धि इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी विल ब्रिंग द प्रॉस्पेरिटी सपोज दैट फॉर सेक ऑफ एग्जांपल इफ माय कैरेक्टर माय एक्ट इज वेरी राइट एज पर द वेदास इज राइट फॉर द सोसाइटी एवरीथिंग इज वेल एंड गुड बट आई एम नॉट अर्निंग so i cannot live a successful and healthy life so i must be involved in earning money because earning is also one of the important duty when we take birth as a human we must earn which is just right and just enough for me and the earning should not involve hampering some damaging someone it should not involve so if it is not involved it is a justified well and good then the earning should be also a part of a human life that is the another duty of human uh, on when they take birth on the earth and then the next thing is that uh, the karma karma says that okay so as a part of a dharma you have spent you are spending your life just which is right to the society just which is appropriate to the learning of vedas but side by side you are also earning money to live and lead your life and your family but there is a important aspect of the pleasure love and enjoyment and because as a karma we must develop a relationship we must develop a friendship we develop a a group where you can enjoy you can share your feelings so physical pleasure as well as psychological pleasure as well as the mental pleasure all type of enjoyment love and pleasure are important for the human life that is the calm and at the last stage when you have done all the things then at the end of your life you must liberate all those things and involve yourself in the spiritual kind of a thing in worshiping the god in spreading the teaching of the vedas helping others supporting others so that you can liberate from this all the bondage that you have on the earth that is the liberation that is the spiritualization spiritual values it should not now this is ah uh, yes सर बॉन्डेज मींस सर बंधन है ना हां बंधन 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 यस बंधन 
so this is the stage of life where you can leave all the things and you should be fully devoted in the spiritual activities moral activities and the value which is just right for the mankind and the society there are again the different type of uh, uh, questions comes here someone will say sir these are the four type of objective of living the human life dharma arth kaam and moksha so which one is the more important is the dharma is a more important is the artha or kama is the more important or is the moksha is the more important the point of contradiction and conflict comes because someone will say that no as per the vedic philosophy there is provision there is mentioning that we must be involved in the earning earth earning money earning prosperity earning enjoyment earning all those things so if i am earning all those things then what is the wrong in the kama which is suggested by the vedic philosophy the love pleasure enjoyment so if i am getting then what is the wrong see here the vedas again clarifies when we talk about the artha and kama because in the dharma there is a no point of a conflict even in the moksha there is a no point of a conflict because in the moksha state you are liberating all the things you are fully devoted in the spiritual and religious activity you are free from all type of uh, bindings and in the dharma you are concerned about the morality you are concerned about the value you are concerned about the betterment of the human and the society the main point of a conflict comes in the dharma and earth how the earth and how the sorry conflict comes earth and calm so how the pleasure love physical enjoyment should be get or how the we can earn the money then the veda suggests that the earning of earth and calm should not be in a such a way that is a harmful that is a harming someone if you are earning money by harming someone by taking someone's part suppose that you have get done some work from the laborers and you are paying a less money or you are not paying any money then that is not suggested you are getting a karma which is not socially spiritually or it which is not accepted as per the learning of the veda then that is our own earning in a right way is the suggested that is and the again it talks that whenever the point of conflict comes the prime importance should be given to the dharma suppose either you can stick towards the betterment of someone or you have to earn money or you have to earn a kama so earning kama and earning artha 
will be the secondary one the role and duties related to the dharma will be the primary one because you cannot you are not supposed to earn earth and come by harming someone when they are against of that so that's why dharma will get the prime importance not a earth and kama will get a prime importance and obviously when we talk about the moksha moksha comes at the end of uh, not end at the last stage of the human life so at that time there is a no point of being involved in the dharma earth or kama but even though if suppose that someone will say no at that time also i am involved in the earning something so the prime focus will not go to the earth and come prime focus will be dharma and moksha you have to help other and you have to liberate the things because the philosophy is based upon when we take birth on earth we are coming with a empty hand nothing belongs to the human so there is a no point of storing the things which doesn't belongs to you and that is the one of the learning of the krishna to the arjun in the mahabharata when you will see which is uh, in the gita when you will read gita that is also one of the learning nothing belongs to the human everything belongs to the god so you don't have an entitlement of that entitlement is with the god so if it is not your entitlement then your duty is to be involved in the dharma so if you are involved in a good thing so the right thing will come to you so in total when we talk about the vedic philosophy vedic philosophy and even the chaturashtra and the purusharth these are based upon the learning of the veda and which comes in the orthodox tradition because here the person is supposed to spend their life as per the learning of the veda not to counter not to question so which is conventional which is traditional which is usual that you are supposed to do so that is the concept of chaturashram and purusharth as per the vedic philosophy okay